Hi everyone, DK here with Mr. V Amps, and uh, we're just here to take a look at an amp that I feel like I've neglected uh, over the last few years. It, this is the Braddock amplifier, and I know I did a video on it, oh, probably three or four years ago, and I feel like we barely glossed on it. Um, but now, I've actually done some revisions to it, uh, and then I put it down and kind of admittedly ignored it. Um, because I solved the inherent problems that were plaguing me about it, but I never went back to really, um, you know, uh, get all of the mojo out of it that I could. So today, um, I was going to do a little bit of rehearsal, and instead of pulling the Smoke and Joe amp out, which I've been using as my signature amp, uh, that red amp has just been dynamite, it's been to a lot of shows. I pulled out the Braddock amp uh, to remember what I liked about it in the first place. And holy cow, this is one cool amplifier and it's very unique. Um, it has a 10 inch speaker and if you look at the general shape of it, um, if you would imagine it was covered with tweed instead of that lovely cowboy boot leather, um, you probably get the gist of what it is, but let's flip it around and take a look on the back. Okay, on the back of the amp here, what we're looking at is we're looking at old-school kind of 50s-ish technology on steroids. Um, <laughs> and I mean that sincerely. Um, the circuit is not unlike a Tweed Princeton in the simplest form which was a 5Y3 rectifier, a 12AX7 preamp, and a 6V6 power tube. Class A circuit that had a volume and a tone knob, and the tone knob bled off treble. Uh, pretty straightforward, traditional circuit. This one takes it to the next level. It can be diode rectified if you wish, but in this case we have a GZ34, um, or is it is it 5GG34 or 5AR4? I forget what the other name, but it's the the most efficient of the rectifiers anyway. Uh, tube rectifier, 12AX7 preamp, but our power tube is an 807 tube, which is commonly associated with ham radio. And uh, that big boy there has a top cap and is not unlike a 6L6. However, with the nature of the 807, um, there is an issue at high voltages with flash over on a 6L6 that don't exist in a 807. And in class A usage, the 807, in my humble opinion, is a little more suitable. So it gives you the power of a 12 excuse me, the power of a 6L6 in the power section, um, running single end through a big beefy transformer, giving you almost 12 watts of class A power. Our speaker of choice, which is hiding back there, is a blue pup, ceramic blue pup, which is what you would get had you taken the speaker cone from a infamous Celestian Alnico Blue and put a ceramic magnet on it to give it a little bit more punch, but it doesn't have that grainy top end that is associated with the speakers that generally were associated with the SAMP. So it's kind of a weird hybrid, um, and one of the designs I did quite a while back, but I think it's cool as heck, and I would love to play it at full volume for you so you can just really hear it rip, but I have a feeling the camera would lose its absolute mind but I suppose we should at least power it on so you can see how cool the tubes look glowing in the dark, because it's neat. Boy, I wish that it were somehow darker or something so I could get a better visual on that, but that 807, the way it glows, it gets that sort of blue fluorescence. It just looks cool as heck. But don't mess with the top cap when this thing's on. You'll put 450 volts through your hand. So don't do that, okay? Let's fire it up and see how it sounds. Uh, this one, I could probably add an attenuator on it to make it a little bit more comfortable at screaming volumes. But man, this thing sounds cool screaming. <laughs> and it sounds phenomenal as a clean amp, and very loud as a clean amp. Okay, so 
We've got the volume up about a third of the way. Tone is uh, three quarters of the way. We've got the guitar pickups running at half and it gives a nice clean sound with a lot of sustain actually, a lot of punch and a lot of sustain. <laughs> It's still going. So anyway, a uh, very sensitive amp and if we just turn up the drive on the pickups we can start to get into breakup territory. Wow, too much already. And that's just turning up the pickups. To, I can add a big boost pedal. This guitar has like a boost circuit and we can even give it more attitude. out of 12. Um, I still think this camera is going to be in, in distortion, but for the size amplifier that it is, we'll give you a little reference here because sometimes on YouTube you have no idea how big anything is and you know you'd get it home and you'd be like holy cow that's big. This is not a big amplifier, but it is a freaking loud amplifier and it sounds really 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 big. That was the entire point of the of the amplifier in the first place and that's why it's got its name, the Braddock. It is named after, well if you've seen the movie Cinderella Man, it is named after the boxer James Braddock, the man that nobody really thought would be much of anything. He was significantly smaller, outclassed in every way on paper, but yet manages to get the job done. And this is the same kind of amplifier. All Class A and a ton of attitude. It actually has two inputs here. This is the more aggressive input, hotter input, and we can go into the less aggressive input and uh, our gain is reduced and it gives a much more mellow tone. The tones of this are sweet and warm enough for country music, but uh, don't discount this thing for rock and roll really versatile and if you want a very short path amplifier that just tells you what your guitar is feeding it go with something like this it's really really slick it's very honest and there's a lot of there's a lot of gain in that for for what it is all right cool thanks for watching y'all have a great day Ooh. yeah let's kick the guitar and make the uh make a big pop sound from the uh, cable there oops have a great day.